Cast is a command line tool that comes with Foundry that allows you to call smart contracts and send transactions. Recently, I learned how to use this tool. So today I'll be sharing with you how to import a wallet using Cast, how to list the wallet, and how to remove the wallet. And later I'll show you how to send transactions and call smart contracts. The first thing that I'll show you is how to set up a wallet using Cast. For this example, I'll import the private key. To create a new wallet using Cast, we'll type Cast Wallet Import, and then the name of the wallet, I'll name it Burner. We'll set up a new wallet from a private key, so I'll type dash dash private key. And then inside here, go ahead and type your private key. I'm not going to share my private key with you. However, I did store this in a variable, so type private key. Execute the command. It's going to ask for a password. I'll set up a password. And now we successfully set up a wallet using Cast for this address. If you wanted to see the wallets that's managed by Cast, you would type Cast Wallet List. For this example, we set up a burner wallet. So here you see one account named Burner. Now, if you wanted to delete this wallet, all you have to do is delete the file. So I'll say rm-rf. The file is stored under home.foundry slash keystore. And then the name of the account. I've named this account burner, so type burner. And then I'll delete all of the files on the burner. And then if we list the wallets again, you'll see that it returns nothing. So this was an example of how to set up a wallet using private key, list the wallets that's managed by cast, and then remove the wallet. I'm going to set up this wallet again so that I can show you an example of how to send transactions and query a smart contract. I deployed a contract called storage on the Gourley testnet. It has a single state variable called val and it stores a uint256. It also has a function where we will be able to set this val. For the next two example, we're going to use cast to set the value of val and also query the value of val. Back inside my terminal, I'm going to set some variables that we will be using. DST will be the address of the contract. Next, we'll set a variable for the function that we're going to be calling. I'll name this variable func sig. This will be equal to the function that we're going to be calling is called set and it's going to take a single parameter uint256. The argument that we're going to be passing to this function set, let's say args, is equal to, let's pass the number 888. And then we're also going to need the RPC URL. For the RPC, I'll be using Alchemy. So say RPC is equal to RPC that I copied over from Alchemy. Okay, next we'll send the transaction to this contract to call the function set and set the value to 888. To do this, I'll type cast send. We'll use the burner account that we set up. So say dash dash account burner, the RPC URL dash dash RPC URL will be stored inside the variable RPC, the address of the contract, DST, and then the function that we're calling func sig and the parameter that we're going to be passing to this function, args. Execute the command to send the transaction. Okay, I waited about a minute for the transaction to go through. Let's try querying the contract. I'll clear the terminal. To query a smart contract using cast, we'll use cast call and then the RPC URL, RPC URL. The RPC URL for this example is stored in a variable called RPC. The address of the contract is stored in DST and we'll call the function bell. This is the state variable that stores the number that we just set. When we call this function, we expect to return a uint256, uint256. Okay, and execute the command, and we get 888 back. When we send the transaction, we set the bell to 888, and here we query the smart contract and we got back 888. So in this video, I showed you an example of how to do account management using cast, how to send a transaction, and how to query a smart contract.